Hello everyone. Welcome to Sew Journey. My name is Patricia Taglarini and today I want to show you how to make mitered napkins. Let's talk about the material you will need. You will need a yard of fabric that makes four placemats. You will cut them uh, 18 inches each. You need a hem gauge. This one works well because you can iron on it. You need the wing clipper too because of its mitering ability and you need a marking tool and obviously you need thread that matches your fabric. This is the back of the napkin. It also has these mitered corners here. Good thing about napkins is you can throw them in the washing machine and reuse and reuse them. Alright, to start with you need to cut your fabric 18 inches square. And then I'm going to use this gauge. This is really a hem gauge but it works perfect for what we're doing. This ruler is used for garment making, but because you can iron on it, it makes the folding of the napkin fold perfect. Fold it up an inch and a half, and we're going to pull it all the way up to that mark. And then I'm going to slide this down so it's up tight. And then you're going to take your iron and just press it, and it creates that fold. Alright, the next fold we're going to make is going to take, take your fabric and fold it back to the fold. Fold it up and then press it. Pull this up to an inch and a half and you'll see it's marked right here. So pull this up and then push it just a bit to keep it taut. All the way around and then iron. I'm not a I don't recommend steam on most fabric, but in this case I do because you definitely want a good crease here. Then do the other side. I know our intent is to do this side, this side, this side, and this side, but they fold better if you do top and bottom, side and side. All right, once you have that marked, then turn it down to the fold line you just made and give it a good press all the way down. Move this out of the way. Do the same thing here. Flip it around to the other side. Open it up. You already have this folded here. You don't want to do that because it's going to mess up your miter. Open it up, fold it down, and press it all the way down. I know that this marking seems a little crazy right now, but in the long run, this is going to make it much easier to get that miter in. All right, let me come over to the cutting table and I'll show you why. You're going to need a ruler. I prefer this Wing Clipper 2. It's really designed for flying geese, but it is perfect for what we're doing. I really like it because it has a 45 degree angle line here and here and it gives you this quarter inch, which is very important when it comes to our napkins. This is a Frison um, iron out pen. I really suggest the felt because it doesn't leave the ghosting effect, but I don't have it. And since I'm marking on the back side of this, it won't matter. So come up to that first crease you made, and in the corner, you're going to put a mark And you're going to mark it both ways on that line that we had, that we folded in. So X marks the spot here. Go ahead and do that all the way around on all of them. Alright, once you have those marked, now at this point you just need to take a deep breath because this is going to work. This is where you've got to trust me on this one. With your Wing Clipper 2, this 45 degree angle, you want to rotate this right into that X we made. Lining it up both this way in the fold and this way, and this is in that point. Hold it down. Cut it off. Do that on all four sides. Do make sure you open it up. Alright, now we're going to go to the sewing machine to sew. We are going to fold this side up. Here's my corner, my corner to corner here, and I'm going to put a pin in it. 
After you do these a few times, you may not want to. Now the trick to making this work is, yes, I have this folded, but this piece is not even. Bring this on up and put a pin here because this will make the fold lay flatter for you on this side. This is where my fold is, my first fold. I'm going to put a mark there, and I know it's sort of hard to see. I'll try to make it darker. This is the fold line. This is where I'm going to start sewing a quarter inch in and down to this fold, not here. Back tack on both sides. The best way to turn it is to hold your one finger all the way up. I usually have my thumb. Fold this over and on the fold and flip it back. Try that again for you. Put your thumb in, fold this on the fold, and flip it back. Do that again on all four corners. So come in, fold it over, flip it in. Pretty much will come out straight by itself. Thumb in, fold it over, flip it back. All right, now I usually take a, a, a hem gauge and make sure I have it pressed all the way out, but these are out really well. Now I think you can see where we're going from there. You're going to turn this under where the fold is. Turn it under where the fold is. And then I'm going to pin. If you use glass head pins, you can iron on top of them. If you don't, please don't iron on top or it'll melt your plastic. Again, come over here, tuck it in. Make sure your seam on the inside goes one way. It will make it lay flatter for you. There you go. Because fabric has a memory, it allows it to lay perfectly back where we want it. Don't necessarily need as many pins, but I like to have them so that when I sew this down, it doesn't shift on me. And some of that depends on your material. This is fairly good material, so it won't, but I have used material before, you all know, that can be a real pain in the neck to sew on. <laughs> I know we all don't like to iron. We don't like to iron, but ironing is your friend when it comes to sewing and keeping your seams flat. All right, because I have glass head pins, I can give it a really good press. This is pressing, remember. Again, I don't like to use steam because sometimes it distorts the fabric, but on this, it's perfect. I also have used spray starch. That helps, but it's another step. All right, so now we're really about finished. We're going to go to the sewing machine, rather, and we're going to sew this seam down really close to the edge. Okay. I have put a regular foot back on. I have straight stitch set at 2.5. Now, I'm going to start in a place I have white thread in that I can back tack in the white so it doesn't show as much, and this one will be good. I am going to use this inner edge right here. I'm going to run it right down here. This is the guide that I'm going to watch when I sew. I'm not really watching the needle. I'm watching this. But I want to set this needle. I don't want the seam right here. It's too far over. So I'm going to move my needle to the left to position it to where I want it to be. Turn the wheel. Let's see if that's it. That's perfect. Put it in and then I'm going to sew it down. This is where you want to back tack about three stitches. I know some of you back tack about 20. You don't need that much to hold it, just about three. And then come on down. Don't sew over your pins. I know you know that. It just makes me feel better to tell you. I'm going to sew up to here, and I want my needle to end in that fold before I turn it. If I get close and it's not matched, I'm going to hand turn it to make it fit right there. But that's perfect this time. So you see as I turn, it is perfectly aligned where it needs to go. Take 
this pin out. This is a time not to sew as fast as you can sew, so you can keep it straight. If you're like me and you have a lead foot, you can set the machine not to go any faster. When I sew with my granddaughter, I always turn it down for her because she really has a fast foot. Again, I want to end up right here in this miter. This miter runs here, so I want this, the needle to stop here before I rotate it around. Maybe one more, and I'm going to hand turn that one and move this back just a bit. There you go. Because I want it perfectly in that fold. There we got it. These make lovely gifts. A set of four, a set of six. Especially if you're making the placemat that I'll show you how to do. It can be made in Christmas fabric, Thanksgiving, every day as this is. Dress up your table just a bit. Again, I want to stop in that fold. Notice I'm using a clear foot here so that I can see where that fold is. Because we've pressed it, it pretty much will stay where you want it. I'm talking about the fabric here. We use fabric napkins a lot. I will say though, the only time they really get pressed that's <laughs> if I'm having company. Other than that, they're wash folded and ready to go. I want to sew back past, excuse me, where I had that other back tack just a little bit so that it doesn't double too much. And then we're finished. That's how you get these perfectly mitered corners for napkins. All right, here we go. And here's the seam on the other side that I put in. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to answering you. Thanks for watching.